Okay, uh, another part we have floor in place will be shower curve. I have floor laid first simply because I laid it there now I can set the tiles of the, the curve on top of the floor tiles, which is the most, most recommended. But uh, I'm starting from the front. I'm starting from the front. This piece also is going to be a piece of the baseboard, but we're going to use tiles as a base pieces instead of wooden pieces. It will be a piece of tile, which is way more easier maintenance and will last longer. Of course, I'm ensuring that everything is leveled. So I'm starting from the front of the curve. Those pieces are higher. The inside part will be uh, sh uh, shorter, simply because the piece that we will put on the top has to slope. So actually, these pieces are sticking out higher than the shower cord for about 3 eighths of an inch. And this way uh, we can have a nice slope, but I'll show you how it goes later. I'm making sure that everything is also nicely lining, because we don't want this to be bumped. lining that's uh, very important too because it, look, it looks way way cleaner looks the way it should yes. right. and those pieces are already pre cut nothing really going like this so the level touches to all of them all the way to the end this is important another step because I already figured the floor is level so all the tiles are the same size but the next step will be to level it uh, it's almost there but what I'm doing I'm checking which pieces might, has, might need some lifting. There's not really a lot. I stand on that bit. The level side. This is very important. And this level as much as it can be. So. Continuing with this part. Okay. So now everything is nicely in level. It's essential for correct doors installation later. But there's no any tiles being higher, lower. Uh, another, another step. step will be, we'll be inside. Inside. I'm always starting from the side because the side is the thicker we have the shower pen liner wrapping over here so actually this part of the curve is thicker than slightly than the center and the goal is to have exactly same width of the shower curve so this distance will be equal through the entire shower curve 
So I'm starting from the corner. I have this piece already cut, the height. And this piece appears to be flesh with a curb over here. So when we will be putting the top part that goes always on top, those two tiles and the curb, there's a, there, it's gonna slope, you see? This is level right now, and the goal is to have the shower curb sloping. So, so uh, these pieces are always slightly lower. About an eighth of an inch should be enough. Looks like that we should be able to have the curb uh, five and five eighths on a plus, which gives us one sixteenth of an inch. And this is our curb. So same situation. For the, the first thing will be to put all the just all the pieces. I have this numerate. The floor is sloping right to the center, to the, to the drain, so uh, those pieces are cut to the floor accordingly. Already have this measured before. So, yeah, so we working on those pieces. I'm checking if the dimensions our distance stays same of course important is to have those joints also lining you can use square to see if it's actually lining or not I'm going to use a piece of tile because it is also nice 90 degree angle and this way I know that the Spaces will be even. Okay, this is our our number two. We're using only tin set, no mastic allowed, no liquid nails, no super glue. See if it touches nicely. Everything is nice and flat, as you can see. that I did from the inside as you can see is already in level because this is our goal but I'm sure that there are some spaces that has to be uh, filled or raised it's already pretty good already okay
Okay, so now we have all the inside and outside done correctly prepared, everything in level. The distance is same. And as you can see, I'm going to place this level right now in this direction because this is how our slope is going to be. And this is how it slopes, you see? This is level, we have this slightly uneven, so the uh, tiles angles to the inside of the shower. And uh, another step here, we have some space, so what I'm doing, I'm filling this uh, space with a tin set. Uh, we have a red guard with a fiberglass mesh tape already here, so nothing will happen to the curb, it's very well waterproofed, but having that additional quarter or more or less of the tin set also prevents if water gets under the grout from uh, whatever reason over time it will ha it will meet with a tin set a dry tin set which also waterproofs at some point and our membrane so there's no option for water to do any damage to the curb and everything that's been waterproofed so this is another step i have to wait uh, for a few minutes uh, to have those pieces dry I'm using a fast drying component in this case as well. So once these sides are dry, I will apply tin set on the top to make this nice and even, and then final pieces on top. So yes, this is another step. What I'm doing, I'm filling this space with tin set. putting a little bit extra and then later with a flat part of the troll I'm making this nice and even Filling most of the gaps, most of the spaces, and this thing that gives us additional layer of surface under the tile, protecting the curb from water getting over there. So there's not nothing else that can be done. I mean cannot be done any better than you have it you see here next step of course the tin set got on the edgings on the tile the next thing I'm always doing I'm wiping the edge of the tile. And the sponge. Inside and outside. And after this is clean. I'm going to once again use this trowel to slide it and make this even.
all the material that is kind of building up on the troll and this way we have this nicely prepared I'm going to add a little bit more over here And yes, so I'm making sure this is nice and flat and later on top of this I will put tiles that will go on top of this piece, on top of this piece. So this is it. Okay, the last part of the shower curve, uh, after I did the front, the inside, I filled this with tinsel as you can see. Everything is dry at this point. We have the entire group sealed to the maximum. It already slopes. It is already sloping to the inside. The last part is to put our top pieces. And that always goes on top of this tile and on top of that tile. We want to make sure we have one solid piece. I recommend to avoid the unnecessary ground joints. This is why I'm using this marble uh, cut to the width and I'm polishing the sides. Uh, I'm not using bullnose tiles because bullnose we will have to have a continuous grout joint in the center which is no good simply because uh, grout might, might stain, grout might crack, uh, so maintenance is harder and more grout joints doesn't look really good so I'm always using larger pieces on the curve and yes, let me start with those. You can see it nicely fits. this point before putting the side pieces I'm gonna check everything with the level make sure that everything is done the way it should I'm checking for level we use those smaller spacers to kind of avoid towel sunking into the thin set. Of course, our ground, ground joints are nicely lining. That's one of the goals.
last pieces will be those side pieces. Move it here. And one will be over here. Another important part in this case we have tiles lining with the floor, but another important thing is actually to have tiles being centered on a curve. So we have the same size of a cut on each side. Uh, in this case it worked out just fine. I was able to have everything measured to the point where the floor nicely and continuous with the curve appears to be in the center and also tiles on the top are also centered. Almost, pretty much. I mean, there are small differences, not visible, uh, but optically it looks very symmetrical. So we have to know how much we can move tiles to make them look correct. done. The next step we're going to remove all those tin set, all, all this tin set that went through the joints. I'm going to wipe it with a, a wet sponge but pretty much this is the way it's done. So yes we almost ready. We almost finished. We have bottom roll still to put in which goes very last because the goal is for the bottom row also to sit on top of this tile and on top of the shower floor tile. And top part is also still remaining but those are small things. Tiling under the shower head. 
And of course, there's always splashing water that hits the drywall above the tiles. And uh, it's not really recommended to uh, do it the way it's done by builders. The goal is to have at least four, six inches uh, above the actual shower head. In this case, we tally to the ceiling, so obviously the tire is higher than the shower head. But yeah, keep that in mind. Okay, and this is this side and there's another side still remaining, so you know what goes where now, so we get in there. Alright, so I'm working on the bottom row of the tiles, and once again, it's always supposed to go on top of the floor tiles on top of the curb tiles, so any water will travel this way, not behind. And of course I'm measuring to the floor, the floor is sloping slightly, so there are small differences here and on, on the front wall. Uh, so very, each tile I'm measuring of course sep separately. Um, this piece will have an answer to the curb. The way you can measure, you can either start from this tile, because uh, we don't know that distance, so we can start from uh, tiling here first and then measuring, but what I usually will do is putting the level uh, accordingly to the ground joint that we have, because this is how it will be, the joints has to line, and I'm measuring distance, looks like 8.5 and, and 1 16 to this side, and here the, the, the uh, spacing is also different because the curb tiles slopes to the inside. So we have one and seven eighths by almost two. There's about an eighth of an inch of the slope on the curb. So of course I'm making those notes. And uh, another from the, from here to the floor. Of course I'm leaving enough room for the grout joint. So we have here yeah, 4 and 7 eighths and 4 and 7 eighths. Appears to be exactly the same. So 4 and 7 eighths. Yes and all the way around uh, of course I'm starting from the back wall. Uh, the back wall will go first then I will start from the sides on the both sides and I will measure those smaller cuts at the very end. So I'm going to show you this, uh, how it's done once I'm finished. So stay tuned. So I'm working on the last row of tiles, the bottom part. 
And I'm putting always the very end on top of the floor and like nicely cutting to the uh, shape of our pen. Route spaces. I'm always using a thin set. As I told you before, do not use mastic for any shower project or wet area. Only things that will not catch any moisture. It will, even if wet, it will not separate from the tile, from the underlayment. I've seen the contractors actually tiling the shower floor with the mastic, with this white adhesive. Uh, and of course, after a few weeks, the floor just came out, got loose. So we have the back part. Now, the other side over here, I have this tile already notched, already measured. You see how nicely it fits. So, I'm going to start from this one, this moment. Okay, so this is our first piece, and of course, we will just continue that all the way to the corner, and then I will make the cuts in a corner to the back wall pieces. Okay. Of course I'm checking before actually applying tin set, I'm checking if the tile fits. I if I measured everything correctly it should fit and it nicely fits. And as you can see, we have pretty decent piece on the bottom and I was able to have almost full piece on the top to the ceiling. This way it looks the nicest, the cleanest, it's durable because the tile actually holds with a larger surface instead of just a little bit. So yeah, so this is it. Last two pieces to put over here, here, this corner, and the corner over there. And those, the bonus pieces over there. So we have all the tiles in place. All the pieces already uh, nicely installed in our shower. And I'm slowly moving forward with uh, preparation for grouting.